in this video, we are going to stub out our other top level views. So at the moment, we just have our inbox, but I want to go ahead and add in our profile view, our, our profile activity, our contacts activity, and our sent messages activity. So once we have those stubbed out and we have those activities created with the appropriate layouts, we can go ahead and set up our navigation drawer with all the other items. In addition, I also want to show you guys how we can do some really cool animations between our two our two activities. It won't be that complex. We're just going to be doing a basic fade animation, but I'll show you guys basically how we can accomplish that. That'll work in, in both Android 4 and in Android 5. And we'll also be finding a bug in our nav drawer code, or in my nav code, uh, code drawer or drawer code. I accept full responsibility for the bug. It was my fault, but I can also show you guys a cool way of of um of debugging that sort of thing so yeah let's go ahead and get started first thing i'm going to do is stub out the activities and i'm going to go through the first one i'll go through that line by line and then the other two will be essentially identical it'll be basically the identical process so i'll show you guys what i want to what i want to do with these stubs it's pretty straightforward stuff i want to go up here to my activities namespace and i'm going to create a new class and let's start off with doing our sent messages activity. That'll be the first activity that we do. For sent messages, uh, we're going to extend base authenticated activity, which of course will require that we implement the on your create method. So I was able to get this method stub just by hitting alt inner 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 to implement these methods. Now we want to do two things on the on your create. We first want to set our content view to r dot layout oops dot layout dot activity sent messages, and we also want to set up our nav drawer. So I want to say set nav drawer new main nav drawer, passing in this as the activity that we're currently on. Now of course we have to hit Alt Enter to import the r class because we're not in the same package. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and generate this layout file. We're pretty much done with the set messages activity for now. Uh, we'll have some modifications later when we introduce the, um, the animations. But this is basically what you're looking at is the code that we're going to be writing for the other two activities as well. So I just want to point that out because the other two activities I'm going to go through quickly. So for the layout, I'm going to hit alt enter enter to create the resource file. I don't care what the root element is, so I'm going to hit enter. Now the reason I don't care what the root element is, is I'm basically just going to hop into my res folder, layout folder, and jump into my activity main.xml file. And I want to take this entire XML file so I can hit control A to select everything, and then hit control C to do a copy. Then I'm going to jump over into activity sent messages, hit control A to select everything, and hit control V to paste. I'll change the text of this text view to sent messages. Anyway, basically this is the layout skeleton of each one of our top level views. So yeah, pretty straightforward. So yeah, that's it. That's basically what I mean by stubbing out our top level activities. We have this layout file and that Java class. So I'm going to do the other ones really quick. Uh, let's go into activities, new class. We're going to do uh, contacts activity next. Contacts activity. We're going to go ahead and extend base authenticated activity. Hit alt enter enter to generate that, that um, method. Set content view r dot layout dot activity contacts. And then we'll set nav drawer to a new instantiation of the main nav drawer, passing in this as the argument. Hit alt enter to import the Yora R class. Then put your keyboard cursor on activity contacts. Hit alt enter 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 to generate the layout file. Hit control A, control V to paste in that template. And then change the text to whatever you want. In this case, contacts. All right, let's do one more. So activities, I'm going to right click the package, create a new class, create profile file activity, remove the comment, um, extend from base authenticated activity, hit alt enter enter, set content view r dot layout dot activity profile, and set nav drawer new main nav drawer, passing in this as the parameter. Put my keyboard cursor, after importing r, put my keyboard cursor on activity profile, hit alt enter enter, 
and hit Control A, Control V, change the text to profile. All right, so if you guys aren't caught up yet, so you can go ahead and pause the video and get caught up. It's basically, like I said, the exact same things, um, exact same XML files, exact same classes. So before we forget, or before I forget, let's go ahead and add these activities to our manifest. So I'm gonna open up the Android manifest.xml file, and I'm gonna go ahead and say activity, um, name is going to be profile activity. So we'll add our profile activity. And then we'll add our contacts activity. And then we'll add our sent messages activity. So with the autocomplete, that was pretty easy or pretty quick to write. All right, so now that we have all of our activities written, we can go and we can finish off our nav drawer by having adding items for each one of our activities. So I'm gonna right click close all uh, to close all of these files that we just created. So I can jump into my um, views package and in my main nav drawer class, I can go ahead and add in our other items. So I'm gonna double click on this tab up here which will kind of full, sort of sort of full screen the application by hiding our project um, window there. So it'll give us more horizontal space to work with. And let's go ahead and add all our items. So the next item after our inbox is gonna be our sent messages. So we're going to instantiate a new activity nav drawer item, passing in sent messages activity dot class, sent messages as the name, null for the badge, now for the icon, I'm gonna do IC action send now. And then for our container, I'm gonna pass in top items. Then I'm going to create a new activity nav drawer item and we're going to do contacts activity dot class. The label will be contacts, the badge will be null and the icon will be action group and the container will be top items. And then finally we'll have act, um, add new item, new activity nav drawer item, and we'll pass in profile activity dot class, profile null, r dot drawable, ic action, and then we will do um, person, and we're gonna do r dot id top items. So those are all of our items, all of our activity drawer items. So let's go ahead and in addition to all that stuff, let's alias out our um, our profile. So you remember how our nav drawer, so you guys can pause the video right here if you're still catching up with the items. Uh, another way to do it is you could just take this item, control C, control V four times, and then just change the other things. That would be another quick way to uh, write out that repetitive code. Either way, let's go ahead and um, Take a look at our nav drawer for a second. I'm gonna go into include nav, uh, include main nav drawer, and I'm gonna open up the preview because what I wanna do is I want to get a reference to my avatar and my username. And the reason I wanna do that is because we are gonna be changing that to the username and the avatar of the currently logged in user. We're also later down the road going to be adding event listeners for whenever those two things change. Whenever the display name changes or the avatar changes, we're also gonna reflect that change inside of our nav drawer. And we can do that in a really cool object-oriented way by using an event bus. But we'll be talking about that later when we discuss our service layer. So coming back into our main nav drawer, uh, the, the basic way to do that is I'm gonna go ahead and create two private final fields at the top of the main nav drawer. I'm gonna say private final text view and I'm going to say display name text. And then I'm going to say private final and uh, image view. And we're going to say avatar image. Then all the way down here in my constructor, after I've invoked at the last add item for logout, I'm going to go ahead and get a reference to them. So I'm going to say display name text equals text view. And I now need to find a reference to the text view. Um, Remember my include main nav drawer, my text view has an ID of include main nav drawer display name. So I need to get a reference to that. How do I do that? Well, if you recall, our nav drawer base class has a protected drawer layout, or sorry, a protected nav drawer view, view group that we can use to get that item. So I can simply say cast a text view 
nav drawer view dot find view by id r dot id display name which in this case dis this is the only item that has the words display name in the id so i can just type in display name and hit enter and the autocomplete will figure that out for me next up i can say avatar image equals image view and say nav drawer item dot find view by id r dot id avatar now that I have a reference to both of them, I can actually go in and um, change the values to whatever I want. So if you recall, I have in my infrastructure, I have my user class and I have my auth class, which owns a reference to a user. And the user is going to have things like his display name and his avatar URL. We're not going to worry about the avatar URL yet, but let's go ahead and set the display name. I'm going to say, I'm first going to say user, logged in user equals... And I need a reference to the application. So this is where things get a little interesting. Basically, I have to go ahead and I, I, I want to access the application. And the application is available through the activity. I could say activity.get application and then cast this object to my custom URL application. But I think what I want to do instead is I think I want to introduce a new method in my activity to get the Yora application. So I'm going to say user logged in user equals get Yora application dot get auth dot get user. So we'll go ahead and we'll implement this method here in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and assume that this method is implemented. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say display name text equals set text and pass in logged in user dot get display name. Then I'm going to put in a to-do and say something like uh, to-do um, change avatar image to avatar URL from logged in user. All right, so in the future, when we actually have our image loading code written, we can go ahead and do that. Right now, we don't have any image loading code, so we don't have any mech means of changing that icon. So we'll just put a to-do in there to remind, our, uh, remind ourselves to implement this later. All right, so let's go ahead and add the get Yora application to activity before I forget here. So to do that, I'm going to jump into base activity. And after on create, or how about underneath get toolbar? That seems like a cool place to put it, right? Because we have our get toolbar accessor. Let's go ahead and say public Yora application, get Yora application. And we'll say, oh, come on, return application. So that's our implementation of that getter. Not too exciting. Anyway, now that we have that implemented, we can come back to main nav drawer and see that this code now compiles. However, let's go ahead and run this. And what we're going to see is we're going to see a pretty nasty bug. So before we move on to our transitions, I want to show you guys a issue with the implementation of the nav drawer that I completely that I completely missed when we were writing the code. Fortunately, it's a very easy fix, but I want to make it very, very clear what's going wrong here and also show you guys how you could find out um, how to fix this sort of problem. So let's go into your login. Let's click on that, hit login, open up our nav drawer and look at that. So that's really interesting. We have our profile at the top for some reason. And then we have a bunch of these inboxes and they're all the same. Now that's bizarre. You'll notice they're also, they also look like they're all selected. And if I click on one, notice how it's clicking on all of them which is also really bizarre. And if I actually do click on one, we do get a, um, we do switch to another, or we don't even switch to another activity. Otherwise we would see an activity transition. We see it jumping back into our profile. So this is really bizarre. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is a slight issue with how I'm refer or how I'm inserting the navigation drawer item into the nav drawer view. So if you recall, our include main nav drawer has the ha has these linear layouts, and these linear layouts are where all these items come in, right? So this linear layout right here is the top items, and this linear layout here is the bottom items, and these are the items that get inserted. Now the items themselves 
are inflated from the list item nav drawer layout. The problem is, is if I come into, if I go back into my um, nav drawer.java file and scroll down to this code right here, my inflate method of my basic nav drawer item, remember the inflate method is invoked for each nav drawer item. Look at this code right here. View equals inflator.inflate, and then I'm inflating the list item nav drawer, passing in the container. Now, unfortunately, this behavior is something that I, I wasn't, um, I completely forgot about when I wrote this code. And what happens is, is the inflator.inflate method doesn't always return the view it just instantiated. Meaning it doesn't always return one of these list items. So let's say I say uh, inflator.inflate list item, and let's say it's this item right here, this profile item. Well, if I instantiate that, it, it, the, the layout.inflate or inflator.inflate method isn't going to always return this list item. Sometimes it might return the container itself. So by the container itself, I mean the, um, if I go into my include nav drawer, by, by container itself, I mean the linear layout, not the individual item that's a child of the linear layout. I'm referring to the linear layout itself. So under some circumstances, it'll return that instead of the thing it just instantiated. Why is that a problem? Well, the problem is, is we're now doing this find view. We're finding our views by ID and we're, we're scoping the find view by ID call to the view that was returned by layout.inflate. So what do you think would happen if this view is not the individual list items, but the list view itself, or not the list view, the, the linear layout itself. That means this view is the same on every single item that's instantiated, every single item that's inflated, meaning I'm overwriting, every time I, I have a new list item, I'm overwriting the icon, the text view, the badge text view, and so on. So what, what happened, what I need to have happen is I need this view to be the view that was inflated, not the container. So it's unfortunate that it does this. And I'm not entirely sure what the logic is behind this for um, Android to do this. It is in the documentation. If you go out and read the documentation, you will find that. Or what you could do is you can control click on inflator.inflate. And then let's go ahead and control click on inflate again. And then let's control click on this inflate. So we're kind of, we're, we're going into the final um, uh, overload that we're actually going to be um, using when we invoke the method, the final bit of logic. And we can actually look at the source code of the inflate method. And you'll notice that we have this view result equals root method or uh, variable right here. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we see that that's what's being returned. But what is result being set to? Well, you see it's being set to the view group root. You'll also note that there is one condition in which the result will be set to something different. If I scroll down, notice how if the root is null or attached to root is false, then result equals the view that was inflated. So basically what this means is in order to get a reference, by looking at the source code, we can dis easy, very easily discover that in order to get a reference to the view that was inflated, we need to pass in false for the attached to root. So let's do that. Inside of our nav drawer, let's go ahead and change this call to false. So it says um, we inflate our passing in our container as the view root, and then false as the attached to root. That means this view is now gonna be the instantiated view, but it also has another consequence. We're now passing in false to attach to root, meaning when this view is inflated, it's not gonna be automatically attached to our container. It's not gonna be added to the list view or to the linear layout. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is immediately after we instantiate the view, I'm gonna say container, dot add view passing in view. Now let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So now you see that all of our items work. 
So now I can say, go to sent messages, I can go to contacts, I can go to profile, and see how it switches between the two. So yeah, that is, and logout of course, which just says, brings up a toast. It doesn't really matter, we'll, we'll implement logout later. But yeah, so that is basically our awesome nav drawer. So let's go ahead and I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here. And in the next video, we'll talk about how we can deal with our toolbar. I want to be able to change colors on a per activity basis. And I also want to throw in the, finally throw in those anima animations that I promised in this video that we didn't get to. And also we will change the titles on each one of those activities. So get the toolbar and the nav drawer all wrapped up so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Also note that the, uh, the title or our name is set to blank. And that's obviously because our user that we, our fake dummy user we instantiated didn't have a display name. I could change that really easily by locating the code that sets that user, which I believe is gonna be inside of our login activity. Because we have that, remember that dummy code that we wrote to, um, to set the authentication. Uh, finish login, starts that, on logged in, finish login. Oh, it's our fragment, isn't it? Login fragment. Yep. I'm pretty sure. Here we go. We say get off, get user, set logged in true. We can also say application dot get off, get user, set display name to whatever your name is. And now I can hit play. And now that'll be set properly. So give that a second. Hit log in, hit log in, open up our nav drawer, and now we have our display name. All right, uh, I think that just about wraps up this video. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.